<laughs> uh, Dad's mother, Frances Shepherd, she was a Shepherd Sullivan mixed. She poisoned herself on 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 ham after her fourth child was born, four child, four children in four years, and she ate ham that had mold on it mm. and poisoned herself. Mm. She'd go out to the smokehouse and take a knife and just cut it off raw and eat that raw ham. Oh my. And on her death certificate, it was by poisoning. And uh, her father, her family wouldn't have anything to do with granddad after that. Mm -hmm. But my dad was concerned about it, being younger, what happened. Mm -hmm. And he asked Uncle French, who was one of the older boys, uh, you know, next to your, your granddad. And Uncle French said that there was nothing wrong. She just craved ham. Mm -hmm. And she killed herself with poison. Mm -hmm. Because he said she played with the kids. They got along good. They all worked on the class good. And there's no problem except she just poisoned herself with ham. Molded. <coughs> Uh, tell me about Uncle Ted. Don't know a whole lot about beyond his father. Uh, we lost them weekly. Mm -hmm. They lived somewhere on on Tiger, and Edward Ted, my granddad, mm -hmm. had come down to work in the cooper shop and worked there making barrels for the rent. But they had several businesses going on. Uh, a mill, grinding mill, several things going on, and uh, uh, that's where they met, where he and grandmother met, and of course from that. At Eli Cooper's business. Yeah, at the, at the Cooper Mill, Cooper Shop. In fact, I have some of his, I have some of his tools, Cooper tools, the hand ads, the drawer knives, some things like that. I have some of the tools. You may have some too. I've got drawer knives. Yeah. Several yeah. things he used. Majoring. They were all made by hand. <laughs> Barrels were. And and he worked there as a craft. He was a carpenter. He also... Ted was a carpenter. Yes, he was a carpenter. <coughs> Very handy with his hands. You he know. also worked at uh, Salt Lake, Kentucky, around the sawmill. And it was about, oh, through the hills, about 25 miles away. And on a, once a month, on a Friday evening, he'd quit early and walk home. And then walk back on Sunday night. And I have a couple of letters, 1901 or 1902, between grandmother and granddad Cook uh, Duncan, where on one of them, for example, he wrote and told her to take the money they had saved and go ahead and buy a certain horse in the country to put a garden out with this mm -hmm. spring. But uh, he worked as a sawyer, a logger, sawyer, carpenter. He farmer. traveled around different places, wouldn't he? Yes, he, yes, yes, he set uh, some, uh, quite, er quite the areas. How did he learn his, his uh, carpenter trade? Just handy, learning himself, learning himself. Most of us are self-taught, and that's what he was. Yeah. He was blind from 65 to 80 some years old. He died 81. Uh, had cataracts, and a neighbor had had cataract surgery and bled to death during the surgery. So Granddad Duncan would never let him touch him. He, he just sat, he sat in the old house and down there and uh, rocked. He, he could tell where the door was and the window was. Mm -hmm. He'd tell when people came in, but he just sat there for those 15 years, the latter 15 years of his life, blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the Worthingtons, wasn't it? Glad to death? Yeah, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was a Worthington, a neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, Thousands yeah. of interesting stories. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You can't think of them all at one time. Oh, I, you're doing very well. That was great. Can, uh, can you, Ed, tell me about the Smith Cemetery and when you were a child going through the, the cemetery next door to uh, Aunt Manny's store? I didn't really know anything about it until just a few years ago. Uh, I had heard Dad tell about it, that there was a cemetery there. And uh, nobody seems to know where these people came from or who they were. Even Grandmother Duncan didn't seem to know. Uh, they, were on, they were on that property for the store walk, which originally was Worthington property, by a three-prong creek there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got torn down, which was on, which was on the right. Somebody tore them down recently. Oh, they did? Yes, they did. About 15 years ago, probably. Okay. And they're still laying there. Some, some of them have pushed over the bank. Some of them are still laying there, and we looked at them and found some names yes. on them. We just uh, discovered them there a couple years ago. Yeah. Remember when we was down there? I knew. I played in there as a kid. Yeah. Dad had told me they were in there. You know, yeah. he remembered when he was a kid. Below the garden there. Right. And the only Smith that I know of is uh, 
one of R.W.'s sisters married to Smith, Jenny. Yes. Ezra Wise Smith. Uh -huh. And that's the only Smith in the family that I know of. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a relation there or not. They were very old, 1800s. Yeah, early 1800s. Early. Were they there before they built the house? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they, they were there. Now that barn behind their store is an original stock barn built by old, old Finley Worthington. There was two or three Finleys, but the oldest Finley who bought the land from the Pokes built that barn. It's all notched and pegged, no nails in it except outside. All the insides notched and pegged, and beams. Mm -hmm. It's probably 200 years old. It has uh, big steel rings in some of the timber where they would tie an ox or tie a stallion or he had horses and mules and they had rings where they'd tie their animals down sometimes to there in a stall. So it's really old. And you said it's made out of chestnut. Some it's all chestnut timbers. There, which there is no chestnut anymore. Yeah. It's all chestnut beams. There used to be chestnut beams? Oh, oh yes. This country used to be full of chestnut. They all died out in back in the 30s, 20s. Tell me about the, the church and the uh, cemetery. And I've heard that uh, Miss, uh, a Reverend Wooten used to preach there. Carl? Carl. Did you know Carl and Rosella then? I knew Rosella. You do? Did you know Rosella? Yeah, she was my my mother's very good friend. What was her husband's name? Uh, oh, uh -huh. Wasn't Luther. No. Anybody know you're talking about? Had a girl named Martha Lee. Uh, Cla no, it's Clarence was the son, isn't it? Who? Clarence. Clarence. No, well, that's not that's the one I remember. I forgot <coughs> her kids, my goodness. But um, Arlene was. Arlene was the daughter. Yeah. Arlene was the daughter. And then she, they had a son who was crippled. Yeah. Uh, fell on a cornstalk, did he, when he was a child and, and hurt him? Yeah. Hurt him in the groin. Somebody fell yeah. on a sharp cornstalk. Yeah. And that's what caused him to be crippled. And they had a son, Glenn. Glenn. Glenn was the younger son. Arlene was the youngest. Um, what was the question you asked but first? Oh, tell me uh, about, about the church. And oh, Carl Wooten. That's what got us off on that. Carl was there later. Duel Robertson was there for a while, too, one time. About mm -hmm. a couple of years as pastor. Uh -huh. um, the land for the church and the cemetery was given by Rance Cooper for community, cemetery, and of course the backside was kind of family. And uh, it was given for a community cemetery and a built in a church. Uh, and as long as it was to be a church, it was to belong to the congregation who ever had it. Uh, several people there, yeah, Carl was there. My dad started a Sunday school back in about 1928 or 29. And Carl was there a couple of years with dad until he went to college and, and all of it and became pastor up there. But then Duell was there a couple of years at that, that time. Then later, there was nobody no Methodist preacher to come around and preach in the area. So it was just empty for a while. And they started the church back up again. And then a Nazarene man by the name of James Flannery came through and held about a three weeks revival. And everybody got coming back to church again. And uh, the Worthingtons and uh, a whole bunch of people, Logans and Duncans and Robertsons and all of them came. And they organized a Nazarene church. That's what it was until it burned, the Nazarene church. In fact, one of Doug's boys, Keith, was pastor there for a couple of years, too. Did Norma do a little preaching? No, Norma sang. She never preached. She sang. Norma sang real well. And Doug played the guitar and sang real well. They sang together a lot. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, George, do you have any questions? I've got one about the Robertsons. Have you ever heard of the traveling church that came up from Virginia with... No. A lot of people who came into Kentucky. With that? It was called the Traveling Church. There were some Robertsons in that. No, I don't, I don't know about that. Traveling Church, and that like a circuit church? Like it was It was back in the, uh, around uh, Now, was that down in southern Kentucky? It was, it was. In southern Kentucky? They came, in, they came into around Lexington, somewhere, yeah. I believe. See, there's Robertson County down in there. Yeah. And That's the this was a George there. Robertson who was uh, state uh, attorney general or justice for about 14 years elected. And uh, supposedly his father, now I don't know how our connections are, we're from Frankfort area, you know, that's where kind of uh, our family came from. 
the other Robertson, Gene went to Nashville. Our family came across into Kentucky to Frankfurt. But in Robertson County, supposedly Alexander, his George's dad, built the first, after Herdberg, the first two-story frame house in the area. Out of wood, not logs, out of wood. It was a nice home. But now, there's Robertsons in Lincoln County and, mm -hmm. and that area, you know, we know, and ours and also others. But I don't know about the traveling church or the connection to that. I've got one other question. I've been chasing Fighting Sam. I've got all of his uh, army records and yeah. all that. And I know he applied for a pension. It was approved. But I could not find his last pension check. Really? I don't know when he died or where he's buried. Uh, and I've been he's, everywhere. I've he's been buried through. somewhere near Frankfurt. He lived in Frankfurt. I, I've never <coughs> been to the house that uh -huh. he lived now in. Now the right? son George, grandfather George, is buried, is buried over on Everman's Creek at the uh, Spicy. Uh, there's, there's a school and a church over there called Spicy. And he's buried at the Spicy Cemetery on Phoebe King's farm. Uh, she's dead now. But the old Phoebe King farm, but that's George. Does he have a, a stone? No, it's a rock. I took Dad back over there and Dad couldn't find it. Because it's just a rock. There's a, probably 30 rocks in this area and they're just a field stone. So, I mean, it, you can't tell which is which. But I did find the cemetery where he was born a few years ago. But anyone who hears this, if they know where <laughs> Fighting Sam is buried and winning it, I cannot understand why the government doesn't have the record of his last yeah. pension check. Now, did you meet Uncle Jim down at the at the uh, reunion in Lexington, French's family, a couple years ago? That's that's Uncle that's, George, Granddad George's brother. Yeah. Jim lived just out below Greenup, and uh, uh, Fighting Sam would come in the latter years and stay a month or two with George and a month or two with Jim, and then back down to his daughters at Frankfurt. And Dad Dad said he was kind of cantankerous. Yeah. 105 years old when he died, so why not, mm. you know, but but uh, that's what Dad said he was hard to get along with. He they said that George and Sam would get together and they'd only be together about a day and they'd, they'd be, be arguing. Be <laughs> that's why he'd probably go to Jim. Okay, when I went down there a couple years ago, Jim was at that reunion. I talked to him a long time. He's old up in his 90s. And uh, uh, I just don't know whatever happened to him. I'd like to find him because I don't know where he was a Confederate, him. by the way. He, yeah, he, well, was, he furnished a horse. They paid he, him for his horse also. He rode with... He's a cavalry. Uh, he rode with uh, Kentucky, or Colonel Jesse's Kentucky Mounted Rifles. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a cavalryman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Furnished his horse. They paid him for a horse also. He was yeah. a prisoner of war and Camp Chase, and then they shipped him to uh, Johnson's Island for a while, and then, mm -hmm. then he went to Vicksburg, took the oath of allegiance, came back up and joined Colonel Jesse's well, Kentucky right <laughs> and rode the rest of the time <laughs> rampaging through Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know what happened to him. That's that's my big question because I've been chasing him for dead. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your, your granddad, French and Green and Arch, were they born on the Dean, born on Dean Flats? Green was born in Swallowfield. Swallowfield. South of Okay, uh, that's Frankfurt. where that's where Fight and Sam was yeah. from, right there. Right? Okay, and then of course the four brothers, dad and his three brothers were born on Dean Flats out of Iron Hill, just down the road here. Yeah. 